How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. It's James Larson from 94.1 KRNA Radio right here in beautiful Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We're going to have a lot of fun on the show. My co-host, as always, Drew Knutson from the Mellow Mushroom. Cheers. By the way, show off that tattoo. This guy got a tattoo oh, over tattoo. the weekend. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Man. He's a wild one. Yeah. Kirk Hayden Hoorah. still doesn't and have I a, didn't tattoo. Get a tattoo No, this he's from Metro Studios. How are you, my friend? I, I'm good, but my hair's starting to get a little long. Got to get a haircut today because look what it could turn into. Whoa, look at this guy. It's the Chia Pet, the pottery... That grows. We kid because we love. Good friend of the station here, Mr. Kurt Burgess from the band Slap and Tickle. He also hosts a radio show with me every Saturday night called Mount Thrashmore. Kurt, you're not here to talk about Thrashmore. You're not here to talk about music. You're here to talk about the Slap and Tickle Ale. Now, did I say that right? You did. Slap and Tick Ale. It's delicious. It's fantastic. It's the latest thing from Millstream. Okay. So, Kirk, set this story up here because not everybody, local bands especially, or radio personalities, get their own beer why did these guys get a beer before we get a beer well good question uh, which <laughs> brings us all together today um, right but i you know we talk all the time about how how organizations and stuff from that are, are pairing up with breweries right and they're and a brewery might make a beer for an organization or whatever this is an example of a brewery right here in good old eastern iowa brewery that's been around longer than all of them oldest in, brewery in iowa, in iowa i believe yep, yep. that really i mean from my perspective stepped out of the box and made a beer for a band tell us about that. yeah tell us about it bro well i've uh, been friends with chris tom uh, and Teresa at millstream they're the owners and chris is the brewmaster known them for about 15 16 years um Somewhere along the line, they figured out we were going to ban them and slap and tickle, which, in case you hadn't known, is one of the biggest draws around. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, about 10 years ago, we st- we got on the bus to go to the Taste of the Midwest Beer Festival. So we just became really good friends. Prior to this, I b- brewed my own beer. Uh, Pat, the other guitarist in slap and tickle, he's part of the Beer Nuts group. So he brews his own beer. Um We just love beer. We always have. That's the way it sounds, Drew. It sounds like this partnership really started. We'll get back to Kirk in a minute. Are you a? You said you loved beer. Are you a judge? No. (laughs) No, I I, I should be. Hey, too soon, brother. Too soon. But anyway, it sounds like that's what happened. Just a nice little partnership between a bunch of beer aficionados that basically got together. Drew, I know you're excited to sample this. Well, I am. And you know, down at the Mellow Mushroom, we have a brewery that uh, uh, brews a house brew for us so to to kirk's uh, point that the brewers are are looking for these type of connections and uh, they named it after your band which i thought was really cool the only thing we're missing uh is the spandex uh that that (laughs) the band is really known for but but let's stay at the beer the slap and tickle we ale the slap, slap and tickle and tick. ale. Slap, slap and, and, and tick ale. ale. Okay. Slap and tick right. ale. What I want it you is to a, do. It is a wheat ale by by category. Right. And uh, here, cheers. Let's give yeah, it a try. Yeah, why don't we sample? And then, uh, Kurt, if you could just kind of tell everybody really what's on the palate, what folks can expect if they if and when they try this. And then we'll go ahead and go around Robin, and we'll we'll go ahead and Absolutely. rate it for you. Uh, you know, our, our fan base, our demographic is generally uh, 35 to 50-year-old women. Um, and my like, kind of room, let me say. Exactly. And when, when we brought the idea up at first, Chris was like, oh, we'll do this milk porter thing. And it'll be, and I'm like, ah, our crowd is just not going to drink that. They're yeah, they're, they're, they're showing up with a 30 pack of Bush Light yeah. or a Coors Light, Bud Light yeah. type of thing. Pack right? of Marlboro so, Reds. So, right, James's right. world. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I wish I was there right now. And, I, and I, know, I know Millstream well. I know they don't make beer like that. So we wanted to do something that uh, wouldn't uh, force Millstream to kind of change their their thing i mean they're not gonna make a beer like that not because they can't it's because they don't want to they're right. that's not their style. they're very very traditional yeah. german type of brewer right yeah, no yeah. matter where you're watching the show from you know we all love local no matter where we're from and so yeah being here in eastern iowa millstream oldest brewery here in, here in iowa a man in the amana colonies and it's a german style yeah. of of brewery is what uh, is is what kirk is referring to yeah, yeah and Teresa albert let me tell you she knows her beer i hope Hosted a a panel a few years ago for Entrefest down in Iowa City, and it was all about craft beer and folks opening up businesses, you know, around craft beer. And she blew me away, Kirk. Just her knowledge of of <laughs> yeah. beer, just in general. And uh, let's be honest, Teresa is a pretty cool person oh, as well. She's- probably the nicest person you'll ever meet cares so much about her customers cares about her her distributors her clients everything she just wants everybody to be happy so this beer slap and tick this took them a little bit out of their comfort zone as a brewer to come up with something for 
your customers. Absolutely. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. We wanted to we wanted something that our fans would drink, but wanted something that would stay true to what Millstream was. I, I'm you know, like I said, I've been drinking beer for a long time, love it, and I know you guys do too. I like people to get out of their comfort zones and try other things. My own brother wouldn't come to our shows at Millstream because he didn't like if he did, he'd bring a six pack of Bud Light with him. But so <laughs> I wanted a beer that those guys would be willing to try and say, you know what, I don't have to bring something else. I can drink this during your shows. And so far the guys have loved it just as much as the girls. Now, how does this work? Okay, so you guys do a show at XYZ location. Yep. All right, obviously they're not selling this beer regularly there. Right. How does that work? How, well, they're not selling it regularly yet. We're working on changing that. I think the original idea was uh, they wanted to just have it at the venues that our band was playing. But then as, as this kind of went on, you know, before it was even done, sight unseen, tailgaters had said, well, we want to carry this at our bar. And I, I had mentioned that to Teresa, and she's like, oh, really? And then all of a sudden, the Eagles Club said the same thing. Uh, my brother owns a bar. They want to do it. So now there's locations that actually want to carry this. Andrew, this is a new beer. He brought up in our production meeting, well, we're going to highlight a beer. Where can I get this beer? Great point. But let's be honest. This just came out. I was at the tapping yeah. just two and a half weeks ago. So in answer to your question and where you can get this beer, best thing is to call Millstream. Go to Millstream and tell the folks there that you want this beer. Absolutely, absolutely. And obviously, they um, have got some places that are going to commit to it, yeah. which will help help the production. Yeah. And uh, they're, um, so, a wheat ale. Cheers. Yeah. Let's give it a try. Yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, I'll go first right up my alley. I mean, you knew that, Kirk. This is uh, kind of your lawn mowing beer. It Nothing too is. crazy. Yeah. Now, I taste the lime. You call it wheat. I know it's a wheat beer, but I'm tasting lime I can smell the lime before I get it to my lips. You know, every palate is different, and I, th I think that's why in the uh, craft beer world, when it comes to IPAs and stouts, sours, all of that good stuff, uh, everybody gets something a little bit different. Right. So I know you guys are picking up a little bit more of the of the lime in the beer. Uh, it's very faint to me. I'm, I'm getting more of that sweet sweetness that a, that a wheat ale is supposed to give you. Right, and... and you know, when you think about your audience, and you mm -hmm. mentioned it's a, a majority of females, this to me is is a a Bud Light Lime on steroids. I, I don't like Bud Light Lime. No, I don't I either. like this beer, and it might be, have a really nice appeal to those females that like that Bud Light Lime type of beer. And it's I like it, too, because I'm just like you. The Bud Light Lime, it's a little too much for me. So this is like just a better version of that, and uh, I think they hit it out of the park, that's for sure. Yeah, I will say this is the third version that we did of this. Okay. The original one was just pure. I mean, you could taste. I mean, it was so limey. Right, it was right. was so limey. Like a margarita. Yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And it was, it was so limey that it was almost a filling beer. So we had them dial it back, and then we had them dial it back again, and then we finally, Pat and I tried this one, and this one was, as far as we were concerned, Yeah, it's perfect. good, good stuff. And I know a guy that's got a pizza place, so I'm thinking maybe I can talk to this pizzeria owner. He's got a tattoo on his uh, hand. I'm going to talk to him about that. Guys, we got a minute and a half before we wrap up. Food pairing real quick. Food pairing. Okay, so I we, knew you were, this guy so, loves so, the food oh, well, pairing. I tell you what, you know, with the, the, you know, sometimes we just drink, but most of the time we're, we're drinking and eating. And I tell you, no matter what establishment you go to, you want to, uh, vegetables. Uh, I don't care if it's on a pizza, your hamburgers, whatever it is. Uh, the more vegetables you can mix with, with a wheat ale like this, uh, the better they complement one another. There yeah, you go. Nice. There you go. Or uh, uh, or some nachos at a concert. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Last question for you. Where, where do you get your split ends cut? Do you go to cost cutters? I mean, what? Where, where do you go? Because I mean, that is that's quite the do. Our producer Danielle, she told me in the production meeting, she's a little envious. <laughs> well. When your father is Zeus and you're born like a demigod, you don't ever have to do your hair. So, All right, that. brother. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, you can catch Kurt and I on KRNA, krna.com. That's 94.1 every Saturday night at 7 o'clock for a show we call Mount Thrashmore. I want this beer in Mellow Mushroom. Can we count on you? Yes. All right, Mellow Mushroom. For Kirk Hayden, Drew Knutson, the one and only Kurt Burgess, and our producer, Danielle, thanks so much for joining the Craft Beer Corner, where we're making beer drinking great again. Nice tattoo. <laughs>